Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 10 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series, uh, where between episodes I've been prepping a bunch of stuff for armor. Uh, let's see, I think I can throw some, some protection on my armor now. Let's see, so fire protection I've got ready to go. Uh, I was going to throw a little bit of gold in on there. We were going to do some mealy protection. That sounds good. Projectile would be cool. But I think we need to find amethyst before we can pull that off. Uh, so that's going to be a little bit of a... We have to wait and find some of that stuff. But uh, at the very least, I can get a little bit of uh, protection. Let's do it. So I, today's episode, I want to head into the nether. I want to get myself uh, access to some lava so we can get some basic power production stuff going so that we have, uh, you know better mechanics for processing ore, uh, among other things. So let's see. Oh, nice. It shows your little thing over here. So let's put mealy protection on our, on our, on our chest plate. That sounds like a good time. Okay. Protection three. Nice. Mealy protection three. I like that. And then how about on our helmet? Well, well, maybe the feet. Feet sounds good. I don't think it really matters, to be completely honest with you. But as you can see, it uses about 24 uh, of these at a time. So I'm curious, when I did this... Okay, see, it's 16 out of 24 for the three. I see it. And then we add the last, and then it's... Boom. Fire protection three. Nice. All right, cool. I like that. Uh, and then how about on the... Well, do you have... You have one... You have two defense slots. I can throw that on there. And that'll give me some gold. And then all I need is one golden armor set in order for piglins to not hate me, right? Uh, and then I'll save the, the helmet. I'll put the projectile protection on. Does that sound good? I like that plan. So off to the nether we go. Uh, we're going to need to do a few things today. Uh, specifically, let's see. I want to have you ready to do that. So I've got my mining gadget. I've got food. I've got protection. I want to check out... Um, a fortress nearby. So first things first, let's hide inside this little mining cave where I've been mining. I did a bunch of mining between episodes, as you can see. I, you know, went a little crazy. Uh, mined up, looking for tons and tons of cobalt. I got some. Not an amazing amount, but enough. Uh, so my plan for today is I'd like to head north and then east-ish. And I'm pretty sure that this structure over here is going to be uh, a fortress, right? Then, what I'd like to do uh, is set up a waystone teleporter that will allow me to teleport between the two. So if I plop this guy down, let's say like right here, we're going to call it nether portal. Maybe I want to change that. How about nether dash portal, indicating that this is the portal in the nether. Cool. Uh, and then we're just going to head like due north for a while and then due east for a little while. And hopefully we can get up there and I'll bring... Um, my waystone with me, and then we'll be cool. So basically heading off in this direction. And I wouldn't mind staying somewhat-ish underground. Now is this stuff being voided? It is, good. Because I don't want to run along the surface, which is where I normally would. Though that, oh my goodness, is that an enchanted ghast? There's two enchanted mobs up there, which is just not amazing looking. So let's see. Maybe we'll go... Do we think we can pull this off? A little bit of a downward staircase here. Not ideal. See, the problem is, is that the terrain here is so rough and not cool. All kinds of not cool and rough. This is not an easy nether spawn by any stretch. I wonder if I can do something like this. And there's gas everywhere in this one. And wh whatever this biome is, is very gas heavy. Now if I hear a gas, shoot at me, I'm gonna jump. Like I just did. Alright, we're cool, we're cool. We're all fine. This is such a bad idea. Look at them all down there. It's just the absolute worst. 
This biome is the absolute worst. I will give kudos to this armor though, because it's doing really nice. Even though I don't have projectile protection on, like, whew, not bad at all. Alright, let's hide out a little bit. Let's make sure we have our shield ready. I should have put some kind of jump boost on my feet, but that's okay. That'll do. And hey, the, the fire protection seems like it's working pretty well, right? Now remember, because I've got the waystones with me, if I ever want to teleport home, I can do that pretty easily. Wow, look at them all. Alright, fight each other. It's all skeletons and ghasts. This is the worst biome in the world. Survive! Hooray! We're doing okay. We're making progress. So if we're looking at the map... I feel like what I want to do is head due east from here, because I don't want to have to deal with this big lake of lava. I'm going to head east, and then figure it out. So that would be this way. Oh, it's a little lava lakey, but maybe I could get down there. As long as no ghasts see me, I should be fine. As a ghast literally enters my line of sight. Whew, that was a fall. I did not plan to fall that far. I really wish I had found projectile protection things, but oh well. The floor is tears? What is that? running. The other thing I don't love about this biome is the lack of lava. <laughs> it seems like there's a lot of lava, but there's not a giant lake, and that's kind of what I was hoping for, but we'll see. Well, I can see the fortress on my mini-map, so that's kind of a good sign. But there are literally ghasts everywhere. This is so unusual for the nether. Usually it's like a ghast here and there. I gotta imagine this biome just has a gas spawn cranked up, right? Holy cow, what in the what was that? Look, fortress! Alright, now let's find a quote-unquote safe space. And we made it. Alright, cool. We made it to the fortress. All on camera, too. Alright, so... Nether Fortress. Now here's the question. Nether Portal. Is it free to teleport back and forth between those two? Because that would be cool. Yes! I think teleporting between dimensions costs experience. Uh, and, and long distance teleports do as well. But waypoints uh, in the same dimension that are not too far from each other might be free. And that's awesome. So I'm going to actually stick this waystone in my base as well. And I'm curious now. Oh, actually, all free. Okay, cool. I'll take it. I'll take it. All right, nice. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. All right, so how do we make out here? Uh, we got a bunch of junk. I don't know what these are. Gold bars from Quark, huh? Okay, cool. Might just wind up, you know, doing this thing. Do I have a filter over here? I went tag-based, huh? Uh, do, 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 do. I have no idea. Let's just uh, let's just put junk away, and we'll be fine. Hey, we got the Curse of Vanishing book. Oh yay! How's my inventory doing? Not so great. We're gonna need better item storage at some point. All right. So now that we've got um, you know, stuff going here, 
I think we're ready to explore that fortress and try to get some blazes. Cool. So here's what we're gonna do. Pop over to Nether Fortress. Oh, that's what's up. Not only do I get to explore... Ooh, diamonds. Ooh, compressed iron leggings from Pneumatocraft. Sure, I guess. Blank runes, compressed iron ingot, potion of mana regen from Ars Nouveau. That's neat. Really what I'm looking for is a blaze, and I can see some on the mini-map, so that's a good sign. Why am I hearing music? What in the what is this? I think it's that mob. It 100% was that skeleton. That skeleton was playing music. What, <laughs> what was that? <coughs> That's hilarious. What was that? I don't even know. There's some crazy stuff in this pack, guys. That's all I'm, that's all I'm prepared to say. Blaze! Do, do these things work on blazes? They seem to. So what was that fire? The floor is tears. Brave the quartz flats, frozen lava seas. Okay, cool. Looks like there's some more blazes around here somewhere, but what I'd like to see, I'm actually gonna cover this back up. Ish. Ooh, another orc. Don't mind if I do. If I could find a blaze, dude, that would be just the best. And I would probably move my teleporter to him if I could find him. Like a spawner. Mm. Cool. Micro missiles. What? Things we're gonna have to investigate. Pneumaticraft has some cool stuff, it just, I'm saying, that's all I'm saying. Spawner Agitator. When placed on mob spawners, the spawner agitator will prevent the spawned entity from despawning when the player leaves the area. Additionally, the spawner will keep spawning while the player is not in the area. Mob farm anyone? I mean, if you're gonna give it to me for free, who am I to turn it down? Ooh, a golden backpack. Neat. Which one do I have? Do I have gold already? I probably do. Now I have the uncommon backpack from Simply. Oh, that's from Sophisticated Backpacks. You know what? I'm going to take that. That sounds cool. I'll take the slimy seeds, too. Man, look how much junk I have already. It's not ideal. But. Alright. So no blaze spawner in this direction. That was a close one. I was getting nervous there, folks. I'm not gonna lie. I wasn't even talking. I was like hyper focused on not dying. Those those dudes snuck up out of nowhere. All right. Well, I've got a few blaze rods at least. Maybe even enough to make my my ender tanks that I wanted. Let me. Um... Ooh. Yes, weather skeleton skull. That's what's up. All right. Let me. Uh... I'm gonna head back to the thing. Though looking around a little bit more seems like fun. I am going to hold off on too much more exploration in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to head back to... I might be lost. I'm not going to lie. I might be a little bit lost. But that's alright. We'll figure it out. This is the room that had the nether wart that I removed, so it can't be too far from here. I think it's down this way. 
Yep, here's some chests I already looted. Cool. Yay, Waystone. Home base. Woot. All right, so here's the plan. Um, step one, I'm going to clean out some of my inventory. And step two, I'm going to get a chest upgrade for gold to diamond. So it's going to be one gold and a few glass. There we go. Nice. All right, cool. Now let's put all this junk away that I collected. And if I have to resort anything, I shall. Deal? Look at my inventory. Such a mess. As always. You guys are used to this by now, I hope. Are you all done? You're all done. You can go back in here. This guy and the tier two storage, and you can give me some cobble for building, and then we're good. All right, cool. Um, sophisticated backpacks, you say? Nice, I like that. It's a little bit more storage than this one. I should swap them out. Plus, this has all kinds of cool features, too. Uh, I do like that. Uh, let's see. Uh, controls, keybinds, open backpack from simply backpacks, open backpack from sophisticated backpacks. All right, that'll do. So I'm pretty sure I can do this, and then I can do this stuff. Does that look good? I like that. And then simply backpacks, backpack can go away. I might want to throw necrotic bones into the mob drops chest. Did my wither skeleton still make its way in there? No, it didn't either. What did I do with you, tag filter? Four duds, yeah, definitely. Uh, forge wither bones, sure. Sweet. All right, and then I can re-equip this guy in my backpack slot, open it with B, and that's looking pretty good to me. Look at me, I already made two shears. Dire, please. All right, so let's see if we've got the stuff to make a ranged pump and two ender tanks. Cool. So we're going to definitely need some diamonds. And what else do we need here for ranged pump? Uh, a couple buckets, a couple obsidians. I think we got some of that. Uh, we might need some blaze rods, some more obsidian, a bucket, and ender pearls. How am I for ender pearls? Eh, oh, hey, you know what? Because of this, I think we're cool. I think we're actually good. All right, all right, we can pull this off. Bucket of water and bucket of lava. I'm gonna have to go get a bucket of lava. Ah, no, I've got one, we're cool. All right, I really don't like the shields, but they're pretty useful when you need them. So you, a little bit of you. One, two, gets me a ranged pump. And then ender tanks get me from the blaze rods that I should have a few of. Where did they go? Where indeed? Where did my blaze rods go? I had a dozen, didn't I? Oh, there they are. I don't know how they got in there. Is that where they sorted to? Huh, that's funny. What do you what 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 tag do you have that you decided you sort in there? Oh, forge rods. Yeah, no, I can see that. I'm gonna remove that tag. What tag do you have on you that this would work? Forge rods blaze. Yes, that seems better. You know, I could I could just make this a higher priority if I wanted to. What I could do is just say like, hey, you're a higher priority, and then you can keep forge rods. And then when I do this, he should sort into this chest. Nice! Yay for Laser IO, which by the way is currently version 1.0 and available on Curse Forge. Uh, I personally updated my pack manually uh, just so that I could uh, be able to play with it a little bit today. But yeah, uh, if you want to go update it, cool. It'll be it'll be updated in the Darwell 20 pack probably very soon in the next few days or so. Um, but yeah, for now, I just updated it manually. Let me go get another piece of wool. And then we're going to want to dye them red. All right, so let's take a look at two ender tanks. Uh, however, I would like them to be of the red variety. 
Sweet. That's cool. I like that. Tank, 250 millibucket pump, empty. Okay. Oh my. That's cool. Let's also get some, uh, let's see, we're gonna need some energy to power our pump. I assume this guy requires power. I actually don't know. I think it's a config option, actually. Let me check if it's on. All right, so uh, pipes does require, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, ranged pumps does require energy to pump items or fluid out of the ground. So that's good to know. Uh, so let's see, 44 and one. Good, good. Everything's working correctly. Nice. All right, so nice and cleaned up inventory again, for the most part. And uh, let's, you know what, maybe I want those glass bottles in my backpack. Well, that's funny, where did they go? Mm. Probably somewhere, silly. There they are. All right, I'm gonna keep those in my backpack just to have in case I do the shrink thing with entities. Uh, so now we're gonna wanna do that. Let's get our magmatic dynamo. We're gonna want one to power the pump in the nether that will pump the lava out for us. So we're gonna need a few invar ingots. Now, if we wanna get invar, the easiest way to go about that is with an induction smelter. So let's get, I think we have both of those on the to-do list, right? Yeah, pulverizer's done. Induction smelter is gonna require a little invar as well. So let me cook up uh, the following. Uh, well, did I already make invar? I might have, I might have already made invar. I have nickel, I do have a little bit of invar, good. Let's start with the induction smelter, okay? So for that, we're gonna need a couple iron nuggets. Let me get a bunch of resources here, just to be ready. Should be cool. Anything else that I need particularly? We're gonna need the blast furnace, which is gonna need smooth stone. Okay, that shouldn't be too big of a problem. Oh good, we have more nickel hooked up. And then smooth stone. Easy peasy. So iron nuggets yield two invar gears. And then we just need one of you. Pretty sure we're gonna need some tin. And then a furnace that turns into a blast furnace. Cool. And then a couple pieces of sand, which I think I can pull out of here. And we're good to go with an induction smelter. So this guy will alloy two blocks together for you, which is a very useful mechanic, because as we saw earlier, uh, you had to you had to get invar through combining dusts, which is kind of not great. So doing it this way is a lot better. We can just throw a couple iron in there and some nickel. I think it's two iron to one nickel. And there we go, cool. And then we'll just speed it up because Dyer's impatient. So we're gonna want a few magmatic dynamos, but we'll start with obviously just, you know, one or two, we'll see what we can get. Um, that doesn't look like a bad recipe. So let's start with, how's four sound? One for the nether and three for the home base. Just gonna need a little bit more invar to make that happen. So let's do one, two, and one. And we can absolutely speed up these thermal machines, by the way, and we will once we get, you know, to a better point. Okay, so magmatic times four and sort. See how nice that is? Love it. Hopefully nothing really landed over here. Nice. Cool. All right, now let's figure this out. Here's what I'm thinking. I would like to go to the nether portal, steal back this waystone, because I want to have the waystone now, because I know I can go around between dimensions without actually costing experience. I would like to stick this guy somewhere that's going to be a lava gem. So what I'm going to do, I'm probably, it looks like there's a big lava lake not too far from the fortress up there. 
Uh, the fortress is kind of sitting over a lot of lake somewhere. So I'm going to use my waystone, teleport to the fortress, bring this waystone there, and then set up a lava pump. Okay, so we basically want to head north from here, which would be this way. And it looks like it's not too bad. We could also just head due west as well. And there's a pretty big lava lake over there, but I'm hoping... So I'm here. If we went due north, we could probably find something. It doesn't look like a great situation, but eh, we'll see what happens. How are we here? If I just get there, I'm good because I can waystone back and forth then. This looks good. I like this. You know, I almost don't need to waste a waystone for this. I feel like we're, it's so easy to get to this thing. Like, why put a waystone down, right? All right, so let's check out where our chunk boundaries are. Because what I want to do is use um, FTB's claimed chunks to not only claim it, but keep this chunk loaded. So right now, this chunk will stay force loaded so that even when I'm not in the area, I don't have to worry about the chunk unloading. All right, so then I think all we want to do, let's make sure that we have a good, I think we put this on top of this. We put the magmatic dynamo facing, hey, that way. Okay, you don't want to face that way. Our crescent hammer will take care of you, like it split. And then I brought a bucket with me, right? I was smart enough to bring a bucket with me, yes. Right? I absolutely was, right? Nope. Bucket acquired. See? We don't really need a waystone down here. It's not super necessary. Alright, so then what we should probably be doing is we bucket up our first bucket of lava. Put it in there. He's going to start generating power now. Okay? And this guy is going to have power and he's going to start mining. In theory. Uh, so if you right-click him, it should tell you where he's at and how much flu how much lava he has. So see how he's, number one, he's building up power. Number two, he's filling up with lava. Now I'm going to use my fluid pipes and do this to drain the lava out of here and pump it into this guy. So he's using the lava to pump up lava, but we're pumping up more lava than we're using to power this thing, which is good. At some point, this guy's going to fill up his internal buffer. You can kind of see that on the bottom there. So his buffer is almost full. He's almost at the 32,000. And it's nice because he turns the lava into stone for us, which will kind of help prevent lag. Right? And now the output of this guy will start to throttle. He'll use even less lava to uh, do his power because this thing really needs a very minimal amount of lava. Then I'm going to pop down this ender tank, put it here. Now we're exporting lava from the tank here and we're filling up the lava um, ender tank, which is cool. And if you right click the ender tank, it's telling you on the bottom of the screen how much is in there. So currently there's about three and a half buckets um, out of a potential capacity of 32. Nice, that's cool. And you can see him kind of scanning for lava. He's sitting at 3.6 still. So he'll sit here and just, you know, clear out this huge lake of lava here producing tons and tons for us to have. Be excited by that. So we're already up to seven and a half, 8.6, 9.5 buckets. Cool. Let's pop home and get ready to use it. So now that we're home, even though it's unloaded, he should still be filling up. So we can see we're at 12.5 buckets of lava. If chunk loading is working correctly, that number will go up shortly. So I don't want any of this no more. What I want to do is I want to have the power coming in from my basement. So I'm gonna run energy pipes down here into my deep stone looking basement. So here's a question. If I shrink myself, and by shrink, I mean the opposite of shrink, but if I shrink myself to two, can I reach? Oh, that's cool. That's neat. I like that. 
I like that a lot, actually. Because it makes it easier to reach my roof. That's cool. All right. So uh, what I'm going to do is run you guys down to a magmatic dynamo setup. Okay. And do we have cells of some kind from thermal? Thermal does have a redstone flux energy cell, which I should investigate making. Uh, for, for that, we're going to need rubber. Um, which we can get from... We can energize smelter. Can we smelt? Oh, we can smelt slime balls into rubber? That's cool. We can also get rubber from the thermal series. Um, which we can get from a... I mean, there's a few ways to get it, I'm sure. There's got to be a better way, right? There's got to be a better way to get rubber. Isn't there like a thing from thermal that like extracts it from trees or something? Well, we'll hold off on the redstone flux cell for now. There's, well, I mean, I, you know, I've got slime, don't I? I can probably knock one of those out real quick if I just smelt up some slime. If that's true, which I think it is. I mean, we've got sky slime. Does that count as? Yeah, that counts. That'll do. Let's smelt that up. Let's make a battery. So if I want this, I'm going to need some lead and some electrum. And electrum is gold plus silver, by the way. So silver, silver, silver. Have we processed any silver yet? I know I've got some gold. Got lots of other things. Zinc, lead, aluminum, silver. Yeah, there we go. Sweet. I'm going to do the pulverizer. I'm going to set that to the auto output again. And what we'll probably wind up doing next episode is automating ore processing. That's coming up next. Step one, get enough power to process ore. Step two, automate ore processing so that we always have enough resources. Cool? I like it. Looks good to me. So they're actually getting really low on power. I forgot. I don't have anything powering these guys right now. But let me get four of you and four of you. And then you guys sort yourself away. And then, like I said, we're going to need a little bit of lead. Do we not have any lead processed either? Rip. Maybe I shouldn't be tick accelerating. Maybe not. I really shouldn't be, to be fair. But I am, because it's me, and that's what I do. I could easily just throw my lava thing downstairs and be fine, by the way. So I'm not, you know, actually worried. All right, and then I'm probably, I know, going to need some redstone and probably some iron. Let's see if there's anything else that I need that I missed. So, Electrum Gear. Makes this. I don't have my glass on me? Dire, please. I usually have glass in my inventory because I know I need it for lots of things. All right, so you. And then you. And now we've got a redstone flux energy cell, which will be nice because it means that now we can uh, store a copious amount of power. I'm just going to pop right down here. And for now, I'm just going to stick this in the middle of the line, and then we'll probably make this look nicer in the future. But for now, it's going to be real simple. So the bottom of this guy is going to accept power, and the top will automatically output. Uh, we want to make sure that these guys are set to extract energy out of the magmatic dynamos. And then we also want to... Make sure that this guy is set to extract energy out of the cell. And I probably want this tank to be accessible to me so I can sneak down here and grab some lava manually. So I don't want it hidden too deep into the wall. So where's my... my uh... Hey, look, 32K. Nice. So the fact that we have 32K lava in here is really nice. Uh, the fact that my... Pipe doesn't connect to it is not so nice. Don't tell me you're sided. I will not be I will not be a fan of sided tanks, sir. No 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 no. We don't have sided tanks. You gotta be kidding me. No 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 no. If your only job is to be a tank, you don't need to be sided. 
I'm just saying. All right, let's try this. What in the... Not only are you sided, but you go on the wall sideways, what? All right, so now we're gonna do that, and then you guys should all fill up with lava, and then you all be in, making power, and then your power will immediately be going into the machines up here, which will be nice. And uh, hey, we've got some pretty automated ways of powering our base at this moment, which I am personally excited about. So let's do this, let's wrap up the episode. Uh, we'll come back next time, we'll set up some automated ore processing using laser IO, hooray! For now, Dalton signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.